Now, ladies and gents, for the next 18 minutes or so, I'm going to give you guys a few very handy tips on how to prepare properly for exams. I unfortunately have a bit less time than I thought I would have, but it's no worries. I'm still going to give you guys the, the very, very important tips. Those guys signing in, please take note of this. Because, ladies and gents, when, when you guys prepare for exams, I am honest when I say this, most of you guys study wrong. And I'm not, and I'm not putting you down. I'm not saying, you know what, you don't know what you're talking about. It's just, we've been taught wrong most of our lives. I was taught by, from grade 7 and 8, maths is not a study subject, you just practice, practice, practice. And now when you guys came to this winter school, all of a sudden you realized, I have a hell of a lot of studying to do. So ladies and gents, what I would advise you to do is the following. I'm going to show you guys an example of a summary that I did for the winter school, or not for the winter school, for the, for the summer prep, or for the empowerment week. There we go. The empowerment week for the grade 11s that they had this past week, I made a summary, for instance, of quadratic equations. Now, this might help a lot of you guys with how do I do a math summary because it's a bit different than doing a summary, say, for business or for English or for history. So what I like to do, ladies and gents, is the following. Whenever I start a summary, I divide my page into those sections. Okay, I'm going to read it out for you guys. In the middle, I've got the title. There I've got definitions and axioms. So th what defines a circle? You know, or a triangle. Then outside of that, I've got the theorems, the formulas, the properties. So those are the things that you Usually, you like, let me use an example, in trigonometry, your definitions would be Sokotoa. Your theorems and your properties would be the identities, co-functions, um, special triangles. All of those would be in that little theorems and formulas and properties. The special techniques and the methods are there to help us solve problems. So, for instance, if we look at trigonometry, how do I solve a trig function? Then you've got to look at the four or five different types of trig functions. So what I did is I, and I will provide this electronically as well for you guys with a memo of your winter school book, I did quadratic equations as a summary. Now, please don't try and copy all of this down because there's a lot. You might not think there's a lot, but there's a lot. Number one, the definition says that AX squared plus BX plus C must be naught and A must not be naught. The big formula that I use is the quadratic formula. But also, I have roots. I also have delta that I've got to look at. That's a property. If delta is larger than naught, there's its properties. If delta is equal to naught, there's the properties. If delta is less than naught, there's the properties. Special techniques... Completing the square. How do I complete the square properly? 
And then I also did an example of completing the square. Especially with a difficult technique like completing the square, don't just write steps, write an example. Methods, how do I solve a quadratic equation? Well, number one, I get rid of fractions. Number two, I get rid of brackets. Number three, I make equal to naught. Then I factorize or formula, zero product rule, and then I solve for x. Now the question is, how do I get rid of fractions? And you make a nice summary of that. How do I get rid of brackets? Multiplying out. Then you've also got to ask yourself, when do I not get rid of brackets? So there you've got a special case. And then I must also not forget about the K method. All of a sudden, you have a lot of theory about one little itty bitty, bitty part of mathematics. Small little part of mathematics. But we know that we apply quadratic equations everywhere. So I know, ladies and gents, time is very precious. You guys have effectively, I'm scared to say this, eight weeks of school, or eight weeks left, not of school, eight weeks left. There's two weeks till the end of your holiday, there's six weeks, then it's prelims, then you're done. Now, now you guys are going, some of you guys are getting heart palpitations and going, but, 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 sir, I'm not ready. <laughs> Okay, ladies and gents, what do I advise you to do? Listen to me carefully, grade 12s. Take a few Saturday mornings. I know you guys like to sleep in late. But take a few Saturday mornings and listen carefully. Get a group of your buddies together. Okay? Bring pizza, bring burgers. Okay, and listen carefully, guys, everyone. I know when I talk about food, everyone gets distracted. <laughs> but ladies and gents, what you do for that two or three hours or five hours, depending on how late you, how long you want to do this, is you bunch of group of kids get together and you summarize all your theory. So you come together and say, okay, this morning we are tackling sequences and series. We are tackling calculus. We are tackling functions in graphs. And you sit together and you start and you get all of your theory together. If you then have it together, photocopy it for everyone in the group. But ladies and gents, I promise you, you will realize how much you've forgotten about things that you thought what, that you didn't even think was important. Now, ladies and gents, once you've done your summaries, you keep them next to you when you practice. So when you do old exams, you sit with your summaries next to you. And instead of looking at the memo when you get stuck, you look at your summaries. Because looking at a memo, like if you look at this question that I did, and you go and study it off by heart, sunshine, you're not going to get this again. You're not going to get this question again. You're not going to get most probably any of the questions that we did this week again. But you might get similar ones. So you've got to learn not just how to study questions, but study methodology. You've got to study a way of thinking. Then, ladies and gents, you practice your heart out. Now, I know practicing your heart out, you know, it's a boring thing and all of that. But I want to spice it up for you guys. How do I make sure that 
I finish an exam properly. My bit of advice to you, because I can, I can say, uh, again out of experience, there's only two kids, two types of kids that finish a math exam. The guy who knows everything and the guy who knows nothing. <laughs> you know, you always have that one or two kids who ten, 10 minutes before the exam's done, they start lying in their arm because you know they're going to get 95 and above. But also then you know the other kids who after an hour and a half in a maths exam, they lie in their arms because they know they're going to get nothing. <laughs> Ladies and gents, for those of you, hopefully that are not falling in one of those two categories, who never finish a math exam, how do I make sure that I do finish a math exam? And the answer is the following. Number one, or well, actually the big thing is, in your room, create an exam environment for you to study in. In other words, okay, no music, unless it's just background. I'm talking about um, something nice and calm, preferably not something like Drake or Eminem or... Unless you want to get like really angry at life, you know, do some heavy metal, I don't know. But ladies and gents, listen to me carefully now. Remember, you are not going to have music when you write exams. So you've got to learn to sit and study without music. But that's not the big thing, guys. The big thing is, there's two big things. Number one, learn to put yourself under exam stress. In other words, you sit with a timer on your, on your desk and you time yourself. In other words, if, the, if, if that question counts 20 marks, you give yourself 20 minutes. And I used to do that when I was still tutoring when I had my own business. When I studied, when I did this, and you guys would hate me for it, before exams, uh, my student would be sitting opposite me, and I would just be doing this while they're practicing. Now some of you guys are going, we get the picture, sir. <laughs> you stop that now, please. Can I tell you guys what's the problem? This, he's getting so anxious, he's walking out. <laughs> okay? Ladies and gents, can I tell you what's the problem, sir? That's what's going on in your head when you're writing exams. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I, I'm not writing fast enough. Am I doing this good enough? Um, am I going to finish? Uh, what's, uh, that's what's happening in your head. So when you, when you do this, guys, and you put yourself under this pressure of working against time, you are creating an environment where you get used to the stress of time. Now, ladies and gents, you have to get used to that stress. So what did I do when I studied? Because I also didn't do that when I was your age, because no one ever gave me these tips. Is I used to write as, uh, as fast as I possibly can, as ugly as I write in the exam, I would study like that. One blue pen or one black pen, and that's what I write with. Because... In the exam, that's what you're going to write with. Now, ladies and gents, here comes a thing that you're not going to like. The another thing you're not going to like. The nice thing about doing this, studying against the timer, is if you work on a mark per minute, you are going to have 30 minutes left at the end of your exam. Because for every 180 more minutes, 
there's 150 marks. If you work on a mark per minute, you are going to have 30 minutes at the end that is yours to struggle with the difficult questions. The second thing that, that you guys are not going to like is you must learn to study for three hours at a time. And some of you guys are going, oh no. So I'm struggling to, to study for half an hour. <laughs> guys, the thing is, you must train yourself to concentrate for three hours. Because that's how long you're going to write your exams. If you're not going to train yourself to concentrate for three hours, you are going to struggle after the first half an hour or hour. You've got to train your body to get used to sitting for three hours and not going to the bathroom or going to fetch a sami after five minutes. Okay? Guys, you've got to train yourself. It's not something that is natural. It's not something that you're used to. So you've got to train yourself. My last little bit of advice for you for this week, and then I'm done, believe it or not. Okay. When you get to the exam, do not start with question one and go to question 12 in one go. So going one, two, three, four, five. Don't, please, don't approach an exam from beginning to end. Approach an exam according to difficulty levels. In other words, you start with your easy questions. And please, ladies and gents, that's why we give you 10 minutes at the beginning reading time. It's not to catch up some sleep you didn't get. It's for identifying the easy questions, then going to the more difficult and then the what the hell kind of questions. The thing is, guys, if you learn to do that, please keep the whole question just together. So keep, say, question 5 together if you start with question 5. If you want to start with question 8, keep it together. The thing is, guys, it's going to prevent you from getting stuck halfway through and then not finishing and throwing away easy marks. Secondly, it is going to pre it's going to give you confidence. Because if question one was a real toughie, it's over and done with. You hit blank because you start, I didn't study enough, I didn't, I, 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 and then you go blank. Where if you do the easy questions first, you start going, I've got this. I know how to do this. I'm good with this stuff. And then by the time you get to the difficult questions, which you should leave for last, all that you do is, you know what? I have no cooking clue what the hell is going on here. So you know what? I'm just going to try. And you know what's the funny thing? You can do better when you are relaxed than when you're stressed. Ladies and gents, I want to say one thing. This last four months will determine where you end up in life. Woo! Getting real very quickly, sir. So what am I saying? Leave, ladies and gents, listen carefully. Leave the parties and leave all of those things for after your finals. I'm not saying don't relax. I'm not saying don't have a social life. But guys, don't prioritize social over your work. 